Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content, process, and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is strategic planning, a key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module is part of the Plan and Implement Knowledge Domain, one of six within the certification program. In it, we'll describe a number of basic planning and analysis tools for information management as shown here. Strategic planning tools provide various methodologies for evaluating variables both inside and outside an organization that must be quantified and prioritized in order to create an effective plan. Some tools, like a balanced scorecard, are primarily focused internally, while others, such as pest analysis, are more focused on external factors like market conditions and position. And there are some, such as a SWOT analysis, that attempt to strike a balance between the two. Porter's Five Forces is a framework for industry analysis and business strategy development developed by Michael E. Porter of Harvard Business School in 1979 to derive five forces that determine a market's competitive intensity, and thus its attractiveness, which in this context refers to overall profitability. PEST analysis stands for Political, Economic, Social, and Technological Analysis, and describes a framework of factors an organization should take into consideration when seeking to understand market growth or decline, business position, business potential, and a future direction. SWOT stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats, and is used to evaluate how well an organization is prepared to achieve a particular objective based on positive and negative internal and external factors. Popularized by Robert S. Kaplan and David P. Norton in the early 1990s, the balanced scorecard was designed to be a more robust general set of measurements that goes beyond the financials to capture the drivers of future value creation." Unquote. More specifically, it's predicated on the notion that organizational evaluation should encompass not only traditional finances, but also the likes of customer satisfaction, internal process efficiencies, and the ability to innovate. Today, the balanced scorecard is a semi-standard structured report that has been adapted for use in a wide variety of enterprise contexts not the least of which is information management. Here, the idea is to use it to capture metrics that can help align and support key processes and translate strategy into operational objectives, measures, targets, and initiatives. These tools are especially effective when used with a business impact analysis, which is aimed at differentiating between critical and non-critical organization functions or activities. A function may be considered critical if the implications of damage or disruption to it are deemed unacceptable operationally, financially, or legally. In the information management arena, such activities might include those involving data that affects revenue or expenses, process efficiency or effectiveness, organization change, stakeholder expectations, or knowledge sharing, including the building of communities of practice. Business impact analyses endeavor to assign two values to each critical function. The first is the recovery point objective, RPO, which is the acceptable latency of data that will be recovered, a point set to ensure the maximum tolerable data loss for each activity is not exceeded. The second is the recovery time objective, RTO, which is the acceptable amount of time to restore the function. It also is set to ensure the maximum tolerable period of disruption, or MTPD, for each activity is not exceeded. Once these values have been assigned, recovery requirements for each critical function can be set in place. Recovery requirements consist of both the business and the technical requirements for recovery of the critical function. Risk analysis is related to business impact analysis but focuses on potential risks and opportunities rather than the most critical points of possible failure. It uses techniques involving analytic review and predictive analysis. Analytic review is an auditing process that tests relationships and looks for unusual changes and questionable items among the factors being studied. In this case, business and environment factors that could put the organization and its information at risk. Predictive analysis refers to various statistical and analytical techniques 
employed in the development of models that forecast behaviors or events. Depending on the type of predicted behavior or event, these models can take on a number of forms, but they'll usually involve some method of scoring, like a credit score. Data mining plays a large part in this as it's centered on analyzing data to find patterns, trends, and other connections. For instance, the likelihood a hurricane will destroy a data center in South Florida. Among the items to consider when analyzing and quantifying risks are the likes of understanding the responses that are available in the event the risk becomes real, gauging your organization's willingness to accept the risk, and determining its tolerance of the outcome of the risk. Underlying all the tools and techniques we just discussed is the need to develop and utilize metrics at every opportunity, and not merely metrics, but metrics that can be applied most effectively to the tasks at hand. According to the Data Warehouse Institute, there are 10 attributes that make metrics effective. They must be strategic, helping an organization monitor whether it's making progress toward its goals, simple, ensuring calculations, targets, and what's being measured is understandable, owned so that someone is held accountable for its outcome, actionable so that corrective measures can be taken to improve performance, timely so that action can be taken before it's too late, referenceable so users can have confidence in the data, correlated to ensure the metrics are driving desired outcomes, game-proof, limiting the impact of potentially negative influences, aligned, to avoid undermining corporate objectives through diffusion of energy, and standardize to promote consistent use throughout an organization. This module has described a number of basic planning and analysis tools for information management. Next, you may wish to review the one covering maturity models, technology trends, and internal IT impact analysis. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctor test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.